Jenkins. I'm the executive director of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. This is our uh, public meeting for our, plurals, our proposed amendment to the Urban Revitalization District. I'm here in the beautiful Enzo Flats. Um, we have a beautiful museum. We have beautiful art. We even have some sweet tea here if you were here. Um, beautiful location here. And if you haven't been to the Enzo Flats, I encourage you to come and check this out. This is an amazing space. Um, talk to Arnie Danielson or go online. Arnie, you have a website or a? Yeah, BrockdonArts.org. BrockdonArts.org. Uh, if you're interested in doing an event here at the facility. At this point in time, I just want to recognize a couple of um, city councilors we have here present. We have Rita Mendez, who's here, um, who's counselor at large. We also have Maria Tavares, who is Ward 2 City Councilor that covers part of the Urban Revitalization District. Mayor, I'm going to turn it over to the Honorable Mayor Sullivan at this time because I know he has a seven o'clock meeting. So, Mayor, go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Robert. And I want to thank the BRA and, of course, uh, all your team members there. If, if, uh, if any of the people here on the call or there at Enzo uh, were privileged to go to the BRA meeting, uh, Robert and his team are exceptional and they really have a, a shared vision of a better community. And I wanna thank uh, Rob May, the city planner, who I know is on as well. And uh, quite honestly, what's tonight is to hear from folks, uh, residents and business owners, the input from the community, right? We need to continue to work uh, in, a, in a beneficial manner. We know development is key to the success of Brockton's future. Uh, and we really are creating a building block to success. And, you know, Robert and I, uh, we actually spent two hours today at Concord Foods uh, up off of uh, West Chestnut Street, uh, one of the leading providers of food manufacturing, not just in the Commonwealth, but in the nation. So um, to harness our energy on downtown has been paramount. Uh, again, it started under, I would say, uh, Mayor Units and then Harrington and Belzotti and the late Mayor Carpenter, Rodriguez and myself. But, um, really working for um, an ability to help our tax base and quite honestly, build Brock and build a better Brock. And then, you know, of course, COVID is not in the rear view mirror quite yet, but um, we're heading in that right direction, right? And we'll never forget the 549 people that uh, lived in Brock and that perished because of COVID. But we need to continue to try to figure out what, what are the needs of Brock and, and how we get there. And a lot of development is happening. Um, transit oriented is key right now. The three stops get into cell station in 35 minutes. So as mayor and as a taxpayer myself and a lifelong Brocktonian, I'm excited to hear tonight. Um, unfortunately, I will have to cut out early. We have a school committee meeting tonight at seven o'clock and as mayor, I chair school committee. So we uh, are planning a budget preparation for BPS. So again, I just wanna thank everybody for taking time out of your schedule uh, to join us tonight. And I really wanna thank Mr. Jenkins and his team at the BRA. I also am gonna do a shameless plug right now. We are doing a broadband, broadband survey. Um, so again, I would love people to go on brockton.ma.us, our website, uh, to answer some of the questions on that. We're looking at potentially offering high-speed internet at a reduced rate in terms of uh, financial benefits for the residents and the business owners. So again, if you could go on to the city website and look at all the different surveys we're doing right now. Uh, and also we are really working diligently to spend ARPA money, American Rescue Plan Act money. And again, 17 million we already have from the Fed. So there's so many people. I mean, I see Frank Gurley, Frank goes to everything. And I, you know, I see Joe Stadelman, Stadelman Electric's been around for a hundred years here in Brockton and uh, Mary Walden and OCPC. So listen, at the end of the day, um, I'm not gonna be mayor forever, um, but we need to be able to continue right now to better Brockton for the future. And so I just thank you all for joining us tonight. and really excited to listen and learn. To be an effective leader, you have to be a good listener. And so I'm going to listen to everybody tonight. So thank you and, and God bless you all. And let's keep Gene Merrill's family in your prayers tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Excellent. Pat, you want to turn that back around towards me? <laughs> um, for all of you who don't know, I'm not that technically inclined. And my staff here, I have Patricia here who's working uh, the Zoom while I work the presentation to the audience. Um, she's also going to share the screen with the Zoom. Um, um, the mayor did mention Rob May, who's a little under the weather. Under the weather, however, Rob doesn't hesitate to jump in whenever I'm wrong. So <laughs> I'm sure he'll correct me on a number of different things. 
But let me do this first. I just want to introduce our um, Citizens Advisory Committee. That's essential to the BRA because we can't be everywhere. We can't, while our board represents members of the community, uh, we feel very strongly that we needed a Citizens Advisory Committee and it's gone through a couple of, um, how should I say, changes over the years. We started our CAC back in 2015, 2016. Our urban revitalization plan was approved by the city council on May 9th, 2016. It'll be almost six years um, coming up in May. Um, and I think we've accomplished a whole lot. Uh, but just to introduce Frank Gurley, uh, those of you who don't know Frank, he's chaired and, and led the committee through its changes and through pre doing presentations to the board. Janet Trask, Janet just waved. For those who are know Janet, she's our official picture taker in most cases. Um, Nelson Fernandez, is Nelson on? Nelson, I think, is also on mm -hmm. via Zoom. Um, Eunice Depina, mm -hmm. uh, Eunice is not here, but Jasmine Brashear, Jasmine is Jasmine yeah, on? She's not on either. And Jasmine's not on either. But these folks have been, I mean, once again, they're volunteers and they go out and they hold these meetings. Every time we look at a land use, a urban revitalization, they hold the, a lot of the community meetings and then they bring it back to the BRA's board. And they also sometimes advise the planning department and Rob May. Um, just to go through this, you wanna start share your share the slideshow. So first of all, the proposed, the reason why we're meeting and the reason why we need your input because it's required by the state. This is a proposed amendment to a 20 year plan that as I said, was approved in 2016, coming up on six years. Um, this is the first, well, let me take that back. This is the second meeting. We had one earlier and here's a couple of things I think we wanna point out uh, what has changed in the last six years. Now, mind you, this is our second amendment. The first one was for a particular property but this, this particular amendment, and Rob, correct me, we've been in <laughs> this amendment change for over a year. We started this amendment change, I think in 20, if I'm not- That's, That is correct. We've been talking yeah. to a lot of people since then. Since then, you know? So part of the amendment change is the uh, zoning map update that reflects smart growth uh, zoning overlay district, new properties, that we're looking to do acquisition and disposition on. Some of you folks know that. Uh, Mr. Stottle, we've been talking to you as well. Um, update on the rehabilitation and demolition, new construction list, new property, uh, proposed redevelopment projects. Things change, and this is a 20 year plan. And I said this when we first approved it. This plan is probably gonna change 10 or 20 times in the next 20 years. This is only our second, so that's not so bad, <laughs> okay? <laughs> in six years. Um, updates on proposed infrastructure and public amenities. Everybody knows where six years ago, nobody thought about doing a um, public safety facility. Well, now Brockton has a public, public safety facility that's gonna start construction, if I'm not mistaken, Mayor, I think this summer, um, they're gonna start construction on a public safety. Six years ago, we, did, we didn't think that was gonna happen. So this is the reason why we do amendments. And this is why, the state actually requires us whenever there's a change or whenever we want to do something different, we have to go through city council and then the city council has to approve it. And then we go to the state for their approval for the changes. Budget updates is something my board is very interested in because redevelopment authority doesn't have any money. <laughs> um, so we look for our, our developers, uh, people we work with, and some of them you'll hear about tonight. Um, as I said, this is a uh, smart growth zoning update. City Council revised zoning back in 2016. Shortly after we did the uh, urban revitalization district, expanded the downtown core and its sub districts, core districts. Sorry, my notes are a little out of place here. Um, expanding the downtown core district, created Perkins Park sub district. And you take a look at this now. Um, just going through the colors, and some of you are very familiar with this. The green that's on here, and I'll use my pointer for those who are here. You don't see my arrow, do you? In the presentation, no. Ah. So it's not gonna show it. Okay, this is why I need a pointer. So the green here 
is the Perkins Park. So this is the Perkins Park. Uh, the purple, which is our 40R district. Most of you probably know what the 40R district is. Some of you that are developers understand 40R is an incentive for development in a certain district increased density. The red is the arch district, which is Green Street, Legion Parkway, Frederick Douglass area. And then we have the orange, which is a corporate property, which is located on Montello. I believe it down here, what we call a corporate district. Um, most of that is, is really based on the fact that Brockton's never had an art district. Our arts are spread kind of all over the place, but downtown, in order for us to do better planning, we created, and this is mostly done through the planning department, through the arts district. Um, what was the other one? The um, purple, which is the 40 R district, which is where a lot of the development is taking place. And, uh, and I apologize to, the, to you folks who are via Zoom because you can't see me moving and showing what's on the screen, um, but new acquisitions and disposition parcels. AC site, which is a Stottleman site. And we're lucky to be working with Willie Stottleman and his family, as the mayor said, has been here for a hundred years, looking to do development there. Uh, site Y, which is uh, 111 Legion Parkway adjacent to a parking lot. Um, who else do we have? We have the AE site, which is also a private parking lot on the main and at school, school Street, I believe it is. Um, and then some of the other ones that I know of, 26 School Street, which is now a vacant lot that the city tore down. But I do believe we'll see some pictures of that proposed development. There are city owned parcels on Green Street adjacent to the fire station that once we build the new public safety facility, that fire station will be moved. Just looking here a little bit at this map. Can you guys see this out here? Can you see that? Okay, excellent. Got to keep up with my slides. So the reddish brown is the amendment uh, uh, or what I'm calling the 2021 uh, amendment for acquisition and transfer of properties. Um, as you can see, the brown piece here, these are all the Stadelman properties. Willie, you probably recognize that. Here, which is on Main Street, is 137, 149 Main Street, which is the Marion properties. We'll show you some proposed developments. As a matter of fact, I think we have one of the developers, actually both of them, I think are in our waiting or on our Zoom calls as well. Um, these are proposed developments, acquisition and transfers. Some of them are city owned. A lot of them are privately held. Okay. Once again, the blue properties showing a lot of the disposition of parcels. Um, it's a very interesting table. Once again, like I said, the blue one, you can see the outline of the downtown district. This is all in draft form. Some of this will probably change. Some of this has already changed. Trinity's development here which is another blue one, is already under construction. Do um, you have any other pieces here that are under construction, which is Main Street? This is really what we're looking at for parcels to be either transferred or some type of disposition, acquisition, transfer to take place. Rehabilitation and demolition, as you know, we have a lot of underutilized properties, um, as well as parcels. Um, just to name a few, you guys know the Kennedy block, which I can actually show this picture. Or actually, let's go back. The Kennedy block, which is 132 Main Street, that just been acquired, I believe, um, is doing going under rehab now. Currently, you might have seen the walkway on Main Street where, what's the cafe? Um, What's the name of the Elvira's? Thank you. Okay. Um, you can see the overhead um, rehab work that they're doing above in the in the sidewalk. Um, School Street, as I said, which is a vacant lot now. Um, one thirty seven Main Street, one forty one Main Street, um, one eleven Legion Parkway. I think I even had Rob photo in here. 
once again, propose new projects. Once again, this is Frederick Douglass 136. 136 Warren Avenue is um, Attorney Anicia's property. Yep, Anicia's property, which is, I know, being talked about as development as well. Approximately uh, 62,000 square feet, this parcel. This is all of the AC site, I should say. I wish I was back at the map, one second. Once again, our AC sites are, oops. let's go back one, two, AC sites. <clears throat> all of these sites here are all considered AC. Attorney Anuncia site is right here. I think this is Stadelman, City of Brockton, City of Brockton, Stadelman, 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 Stadelman. All right. <laughs> Okay, um, a lot of those sites you will see is also um, leased from the settlements by the parking authority. Once again, a, a good look down, I think this is actually looking down Frederick Douglass Avenue. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the proposed development on the settlement site. Um, you guys can ask questions too. I mean, this is supposed to be interactive as well as you folks on Zoom. And I don't wanna face my back to you. Ooh. What you see on this photo is actually a uh, vertical urban garden um, that is being proposed to be developed. The yellow up top is housing, the gray is parking, and the red is commercial interesting concept. Across the street, which we don't show here though, is where the public safety facility is also going. The Y site, which is 111 Legion Parkway, which is also the corner, you know where the gas station is, Brass, um, where that gas station is, there's a building there that is also underutilized. Uh, used to be Legion Parkway Pizza. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I can only know by places by where I eat. <laughs> Used to eat anyway. It was open. Um, it's now closed. Uh, we've been talking with the owner of that property who lives in Cambridge, who has been talking to a developer who's very interested. They did come into a, a proposal. I think they met with Rob May and myself um, about developing that whole block from the gas station all the way down to where the lot is, the parking lot right near Legion Parkway cleaners, um, came in with a proposal. I think they were a little hurt because we told them we hated to develop their development. They were looking to rehab it. And we just told them, no, it's just a horrible design. It's hard to build. I'm, I'm one that always believes it's hard to make, say this politically correct. So I don't want the mayor to get me in trouble and say, Robert, you can't talk to developers like that. Um, when you have buildings that are not, or are in deplorable condition and you've allowed them to be deplorable, um, it's hard to bring them back and make them even be plus commercial buildings. It's definitely hard. And with today's day and age, if you're not doing a lot of what I would call either new construction or bringing them to A minus commercial buildings. It's usually in the best interest of the community and especially in the neighborhood, just to tear them down and start from scratch. These buildings have been vacant. God, I know I came back here in 09, they were vacant, except for Legion Parkway Pizza, where I ate. But all the other stores were pretty much vacant. Um, and the upstairs have been vacant for a while. This is what we're proposing to look at for that space. Um, I believe we had some um, students, architectural students. Rob, is that correct? Yes, th that is correct. This is a rendering that was prepared by students at the Boston Architectural College. Um, yep. And it's just a site rendering. It, it's what could happen could. here um, if we all work together. Yeah. And one of the things I know, I was talking to Arnie who's sitting back here and I was saying, if you don't dream big, 
You get, you really do. I mean, you know, the mayor's talked about, you know, we're getting ARPA funds and funds, but you really do have to dream big in order to make something happen. You really have to get people excited. And people do get excited when they see pictures. Everybody does. I kind of look at the numbers and kind of cool them down a little bit, but this is what could happen there, which would change that whole corner. I mean, that would change all of Legion Parkway. Um, Y site, uh, Security Federal. This is where we're looking actually to connect Frederick Douglass Avenue and Legion Parkway. Um, our planning department and Rob has done a very good job in, in coming up with concepts and working with parcels and working with owners. Um, this is kind of people walk, you know, sometime during the summer he has a chain up so that you can't go through there. A lot of people hop over the fence and walk over to Legion Parkway as opposed to walking all the way around the corner to Warren Avenue, <clears throat> walking all the way a corner. We kind of figured if we can work with him and make a green space to make something similar to this so that people have a shortcut. And with what we're proposing on Frederick Douglass, this makes a lot of sense um, for people, easy access in, Right now, and even six years ago, Legion Parkway was the business component for downtown um, with the health center, Firestone, Harbor One, right there on Legion Parkway, generated a lot of business. And you even have now some of the other um, uh, cosmetic shops, hair shops uh, that are there. And people do, that is a business component um, of downtown. Um, Robert, if I could jump in. Sure, this Robert. Is this is the site where the uh, Liberty Tree is located. Uh, it's where Frederick Douglass and other abolitionists came to speak. It's adjacent to a site that is purportedly an underground railroad station. And um, this green link, um, which would link the new proposed parking garage on Frederick Douglass to Legion Parkway would um, uh, make a great uh, uh, little parklet that that honors all the abolitionists mm -hmm. who have been in and around Brockton. Good. That's why we named it Frederick Douglass Avenue. Um, but it's really good point. And that's some of the history of Brockton that I know um, a lot of the community wants to maintain and we want to maintain. And this is, I mean, this is just one great link that I think really connects the business district of downtown with the housing and the proposal, as Rob said, the garage. Hey, Robert, if I can jump in before I head up to Brockton High School, um, you know, of course, put this on your calendar, April 1st, Brockton Beer will be opening, right? Put that down, April 1, it's a game changer, first black owned brewery in the Commonwealth here in Brockton. Uh, I wanna thank DPW Commissioner Pat Hill. Uh, mm -hmm. He took it upon himself to order uh, Frederick Douglass banners uh, with famous quotes by Frederick Douglass that will be displayed on uh, the poles uh, outside from uh, Main Street going up Frederick Douglass. Uh, and I've also already spoken to State Representative Jerry Cassidy to see Jerry was able to get in the supplemental budget last year, uh, 150,000 for a Marvelous Marvin Hagler statue. I reached out to the representative to see if we could also this budget potentially get one for a Frederick Douglass statue which would fit really nicely in this schematic here. So um, the rep has been awesome in the past and I, I, I feel that you know he'll be an advocate and that may or may not come. If it doesn't, we'll figure out how to, uh, to do that. But just wanted to leave everybody on that note, April 1st, I'm buying the first round. So if you get there early, you'll get a free beer on Sullivan. Be well, everybody heading up to Brockton High. Bye-bye. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We also have some questions in the chat that I think Rob has answered. Um, just so that the, the audience here, um, here's the questions as well. Let me just back it up to Frank's, all the way to Frank's. Um, sure, um, Frank Gurley, who's on the CAC says, why is a Saddleman site referred to as a vertical garden? Is there a commercial garden? Yes, they will be selling produce. Um, the other piece of this is that it's it's just not the vertical garden that's there. There is also the garage. There's also housing and commercial on the first floor. Um, but I think that's a very good question. Thank you, Frank. Let's go up one. Uh, who is this? What is the BRA doing to make sure that affordable studio space for working artists will exist in the downtown going forward? 
Well, we're working with, uh, in particular, Hotel Grayson that will be affordable studios. Um, I think there's 18 studio or 16 studios that's going in there. They do have some, what they tell me is interesting um, concepts for the commercial space. I'm not sure what that is. They seem to be keeping it a secret, but hopefully uh, they'll, we'll have another public meeting and we'll know what they're proposing for the Hotel Gr Grayson. But above the, in the Hotel Grayson, that is going to be studio, affordable studio housing through NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. Excellent. This is the AE site. This is currently 14,500 square feet parking lot on the corner of Main Street near um, City Hall. Um, the vision for this is to make it a little more connection to City Hall. As you know, we did City Hall approximately almost seven, eight years ago. Is that right, Rob? Um, and I keep calling on you, Rob, only because I'm, I always yep. do. Rob seven is not- Seven years ago. <laughs> seven years ago? Yes. Yeah. And so we'd like to continue it so that we can do something, make it a little more green space downtown, um, which is nice. And I see Ed nodding his head because this is good for Brockton Beer, which is located right across the street. Um, but once, once again, giving us more green space, you guys know that we do operate a farm, uh, um, farmer's market during the summer into the fall, um, and it's growing. And every year we get more traffic issues, but it's a, it's a good thing for downtown and it's a good thing for the city. Excellent design work. Site S, which is where the fire station, I mentioned this before, <laughs> This is probably one of the oldest fire stations in America, maybe in maybe in the maybe in North America. Um, <laughs> this fire station, if I'm not mistaken, um, was electrified by Thomas Edison. Yeah, I'm not like <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Edison. He was around before you guys. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> just a little. Yeah. Um, this is. Here's our thoughts with this is that once the fire station or the public safety facility campus is done is that the fire station will move, station one will move into a new facility, a much more technology driven facility with space. Um, this will be a nice museum. As I said, it may be the oldest fire station in, in, in North America. Um, also the fact that it's, I've seen a lot of, I should say old fire stations turned into restaurants or some type of amenity. This would be perfect uh, with the museum. And, it. I think it would be perfect. And, and the reason why we're seeing it from behind off of Green Street is that the fire station and the alarm building are already in the urban renewal plan, mm -hmm. but the back lots, the parking area were not included. That was an oversight. And so we're taking time to fix that so that the whole parcel can be developed. Yeah, excellent. And as I said, site AD, which is 132 Main Street, we talked about this. This is where <coughs> it's located as well. Um, I believe, Rob, do you know the name of the people who acquired this property? Um, and it was just a couple of months ago. Uh, David Tregash. Okay. And they acquired it and they're doing housing and office space, Rob? Is that correct? Housing and commercial retail on the first floor. Mm -hmm. 26 School Street. Um, the city tore this building down. Oh, can I, 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 I'm sorry, can I jump in just a second? So, some of these properties you'll see Robert referring to, he'll also say, you know, there's a developer or there's a deal in the works with X. And you'll ask yourself, well, then why are we putting it on the urban renewal plan? Well, as we've all learned, sometimes deals fall through mm -hmm. and we don't want to be left holding the bag. So it makes sense for us to, to add it to or keep it on the urban renewal plan. So in case the BRA has to step in, and wrestle that property back. It doesn't sit vacant and underutilized for, for years. 
until somebody else comes along. Excellent, Rob, good point. This is a rendering also for that site, um, looking at once again, doing housing. Site X, 63 Legion Parkway. Um, interesting enough, uh, everybody know where the Alamo is and then there's a shop there. Alamo is pretty busy. Uh, I mean, I haven't had the pleasure of going in and tasting the cuisine, but it seems to be pretty busy. But there's a couple of spaces or I say storefronts that have been closed for a while. Um, some of it may have been due to fire. And I know we put in here destroyed by fire in 2015. Um, in a lot of municipalities that I've worked with in the past, you usually don't let I should say burnout property, especially storefronts, sit around for a long period of time. Most of my, most of my work experience, and fortunately and unfortunately, has been in Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan. They just don't let them sit around. Um, you're forced to do something with them, or the city comes in and takes them over. Um, this has been vacant for a while. It's on Legion Parkway. Like I said, it is the business component of downtown. There's no reason why this property should sit vacant for now, close to what, seven years? There's no reason why it should. Um, so that's why we do urban revitalization plans. So that the and, BR- And while it, oops, sorry. And while it looks like one building, there's actually three different owners. Mm -hmm. And we're only talking about going after the owner of the part that has been burned out. Yep. Excellent. So here are some of the proposed infrastructure and public am amenities. <clears throat> we talk about the garage at Frederick Douglass. This is where I think Arnie, we talked about the Performing Arts Center expanding City Hall Plaza. You've seen that in the green links. Um, here's just a map of some of the uh, public amenities. Here's looking at it again, just from an oversight. Um, as you guys know, this is lot next to, I think it's lot B, um, right across from um, oh, WB Masons. Can I forget them? This is what we're, we're, we're dreaming of. <laughs> I remember Rob showed me this and I said, Jesus, where is this at? He said, this is our <laughs> rendering for Brockton. I said, where is this? Um, you gotta think big. Uh, we had, uh, Rob gave me the history and some of you might have seen it on Facebook. I don't do Facebook, so he had to tell me everything. Um, we had at one point in time, Brockton, like five theaters. <sighs> Who would have known? We had five theaters in Brockton. Um, we have over 105, 106,000 people and we don't have a performing arts other than what's at the school. Who's whispering to me? <laughs> <laughs> said 100. <laughs> All right. Um, this is what we're thinking. I mean, you got to think big. And here's where we have Brockton Orchestra. We have a high school uh, band performing arts, but we don't have anywhere for them to perform. Um, <clears throat> this is our thoughts. You know, um, mm -hmm. six, seven years ago, we said, we're going to redevelop the existing police station into something else. We're going to redevelop the historic fire station into something else. And that we're going to build a new public safety building. People thought we were crazy. And it's like, well, if you don't plant the flag and say, this is what we want, then it's not, you're not gonna see it happen. And so while this is aspirational and it could fit here, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to fit there or that it's going to be there, but right. it's, it's something to work and to rally behind. Absolutely. And the, uh, and the other thing, and I, and I mentioned this to the mayor and to Rob, um, Stoughton has built a new high school, uh, Mansfield has built a new um, fire department, police department in Sharon, they all got new facilities and we're still dealing with our facility. Our police and public safety deserve better is the bottom line, you know, they really do. So I'm glad to see that the city's committing $98 million. Um, one thing I was taught, and this is, 
I don't want to date myself, when I first started community work is that when the public invests, private investment follows. So we're putting in that we're putting the, the skin in the game and we're going to reap the benefits of private development. That's what it's all about. The one thing um, we look at, and Rob, you can talk a little bit about this if you're up to it, is that the budget in 2017, <laughs> we're looking at 49 million. 2022, and you guys know construction prices, and well, you can talk about it. Now we're looking at 275 million. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and that sounds scary, but when you see the budget laid out, in, yep. and we're not going to put it up on this slideshow because it's just, too big, but it's it's going to go up on Robert's webpage within a week. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of unknowns in the original budget, and mm -hmm. we've now taken the time to fill that out to make sure that we have um, more analysis of, of what projects could cost. Right. Um, certainly converting downtown Main Street, Warren Avenue from one way to two way traffic uh, and making all the side streets work with it is is going to be a big cost. Public, uh, the Performing Arts Center is a big cost. The new parking garage is a big cost. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're paying for all of it. We certainly are going to continue to work with our state and federal partners to bring as much money into Brockton as possible. But if we don't put some skin in the game, as Robert said, um, we're not going to attract those partners. And um, uh, again, when the grant goes or when the uh, budget goes public, you'll see a new format that's much easier to use um, and identifies each project and potential funding sources. And as we said early on, this is a 20-year plan. We're in the year seven. So we have another what? <laughs> another 13 years ago. Oh, well, don't uh, make me do math. <laughs> you know, we got another 13 years to go in order to make, make some of this come to fruition. Um, Rob pointed out the two-way traffic. It's just not the two-way traffic on Main Street. It's all the, how should I say, accessory streets, Warren Ave, you got Church Street. There's all these little other streets, one way, some of them are two ways, that you also have to sync up. Um, and that's a big task. <laughs> that's a big task. All right. Um, carpenter garage costs is fully paid for now. It's been operating since 2020. Um, so these are, I mean, these are the things we're looking at. And this is why we're having this meeting. It's an amendment. It's in a draft form. It does have to go before city council. Um, we have to show the state that we've had these meetings. We need feedback. You can go on the BRA's uh, website as well as the planning department's website. I'm gonna open it up for any comments, any questions. Um, anybody on Zoom have any questions? You don't have to put it in chat, but you can. Let me ask you folks, because you guys showed up. Um, and make sure everyone signs in, because I think I have more than 20 people here, which is a good sign. <laughs> and then I have like another, how many on? And then we have another 18 on Zoom. So questions, comments, what's your thoughts? I mean, a lot of you folks live here. What's your thoughts? So can I, I'm on, I'm on Zoom. This is Mary Waldron. Um, so not only, ahead, the old, not only Old Colony Planning Council, and I'm actually three blocks or one block down from you guys, but I've had a meeting earlier today. But, um, but also serving as the interim president of the DBA. So um, a lot of this was presented before the DBA and I know we're having a meeting next week and I would love to have, not that it's required, but I would love to have the DBA at least fully support these amendments. Um, I said it in the chat earlier and um, you know I spend a lot of time in the morning picking up trash around the building. And I think some of the things that, you know as we're investing in the downtown, there's some things that are ancillary to this, and it's really important that, you know, again, I don't mind picking up the trash, but I do think that there's some things with this investment has to come some um, some other things and maybe perhaps, and I know Rob has some ideas about this, is getting, um, you know, ambassadors and, and, and others to help do some of the cleanup, and I know that's where some of the bid comes into play. 
But um, I did also mention about green space and Rob answered it by saying there will be some other showings of that. But I'm just saying that as I walk past either the Dunkin Donuts and sometimes those verticals does not allow for some openness at that, that as you know, as you go down Center Street between um, the Trinity development, as well as, as, as WB Mason, it's a tunnel, right? It's walls that you see. And I just want to make sure that as we are, I think all the plans look fabulous. It's thinking big. It's um, a lot of work between Rob and the planning office and the redevelopment authority and citizen group and the DBA mem members and John Marion. I just want to make sure that as we build up vertically, and I'm, I, I think we just need to also make sure while I believe in, and I saw the plan for the plaza, um, um, I think it has to be more than that. And um, I don't know exactly how, I know at one point there was a plan, Rob, and maybe, and now I'm dating myself, but there was a nice walkway between um, between City Hall and um, the parking of uh, the Lincoln lot and through W.V. Mason that was going through Trinity and over to the next lot and all the way over to um, um, Center Street. Um, and mm -hmm. sorry, one more further. What am I talking about? <laughs> I can't. So you know what I mean? So so part of me is thinking, I and, and I will wait for that to be done. But since this is an open forum and asking, I would like to make sure that as we are further developing and i believe that we should have all those um, amenities somehow have some additional green space um and and i know robert we're going to talk a little bit more ocpc is going to do a um, a survey of the residents um, as we're bringing people we want to make sure um, and i'll plop it in the the the, the, um, the chat but that walkability study that um uh, walk boston did you know I'm not quite sure if 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 Brockton is ready is really walkable, um, since I do do a lot of walking in the downtown area. Those those are just my my thoughts, and I know that was a lot being thrown, but um, those are my thoughts. So let me ask Mary, because this is always a concern of any urban area, is green space and the availability of green space. I once read a book um, about London when they were first under geez the late 1900s, early 20th century. And they didn't, and they had to take in consideration of green space, you know, because you, they have a lot of, how should I say, graveyards, and people would have picnics in the graveyard because they didn't have green space. So that's vital for people's enjoyment, quality of life to have green space. Um, and I, I think, Mary, what we have to, because we have to be smart about it. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of open space downtown. We don't have a lot of developable space downtown so right. we do have to be smart about it shade is another thing uh you have to consider as well when you're doing green space one thing i like to show you and i know jonathan from trinity is here as well this is the trinity development how come i can't show it on my screen it's we can see it here i can see it oh okay but i can't see it on my screen it's on it's this one right here it's where Patricia, you're going to need to give some technical uh, assistance there to your boss. <laughs> Mary, don't be smart, okay? I can't <laughs> mute you, okay? I can't mute you. Um, I, it, and I, I get, what, I, I do get what you're saying, and I, and I yeah. think this picture of certainly of the development is beautiful. It just is beautiful, and and I, I, I did not want to come across as being um, negative yeah. at all. I, I, I think that wherever that we can, because you know. Um, there are places that even if it's an availability on top of a roof to to have some green space and have some benches on top of a roof or perhaps we work with the parking authority for both both garages that we put designated area with some benches up there right yeah. whatever it is um I, I there are some ideas um wherever yeah. those beautiful children are those were beautiful so, well, thank those you. Are my kids. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I can't switch it. But here's the thing. Um, we do have to consider green space um, and open space and um, parklets um, within the downtown area. Yeah. And the link is one, one way of doing that, Mary. But there are some other things. We're doing a new road, uh, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, where there's going to mm -hmm. be a parklet mm -hmm. at, uh, on it as well. Um, yeah. I see Councillor Thompson is here as well. 
you're going to have to speak up or step forward. We're going to make you come to the head of the class. <laughs> Just on sure. the issue of green space. Yes. Uh, one of the issues that I've been working on uh, with the mayor and uh, with uh, Rob May is the development of uh, Sycamore Grove. Mm. So uh, Sycamore so Grove is that. a property that's currently located uh, behind the uh, the new DUA building. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be the old bath bus tournament. It's uh, currently where the Prava pop-up beer garden is held. And so uh, there's a plan in development uh, to develop this area into a green space. It's gonna have a uh, music stage. They'll have um, uh, either grass or turf uh, for, um, for art displays, uh, uh, craft fairs, civic events, uh, stuff to that effect. And um, one of the things that I've been working on with the mayor is that uh, the new ARPA funds uh, allow for uh, the spending of that money on public green spaces. So <clears throat> I had a, a, a conversation with the mayor. Uh, he yeah. approved just, uh, the development of Sycamore Grove yes. using ARPA funds. So that will be a tremendous uh, green space downtown, a uh, place where the residents of Brockton can gather. Uh, we can enjoy each other's company. We can have different civic events. And so uh, that's that's one area. Also, there would be a, a vendor building uh, with the ability for food trucks, for uh, outdoor, um, uh, uh, you know, to, to have um, uh, people come and serve food, right? There'll be uh, uh, lockable bathrooms. So it'll be an area that uh, that we can use uh, for uh, different, uh, different events. <clears throat> Another area that we're potentially considering is the uh, uh, what we call the uh, city hall plaza extension? Yeah. All right, and so yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is an area that's uh, basically we have city hall plaza and we have that empty parking lot right in the front. Now we don't own it; uh, obviously, we would have to acquire it. Um, but uh, there, there is uh, currently discussion about potentially there's a check the temperature to see if the owner would like to sell it. But to acquire uh, that area and we could extend um, City Hall Plaza into this parking lot. Uh, that's right there at the corner of uh, School Street and Main Street will be another area where people can congregate. Uh, we have some preliminary plans showing um, like a, a temporary ice skating rink during the winter, um, a, a, a splash pad features during the summer mm -hmm. uh, with the shading structure. Um, places uh, for people to lock up gear if they want to hold events. So, you know, we understand that the requirement of green space in our downtown is critical. Mm -hmm. uh, we need additional areas in our downtown where uh, the existing residents can have some place to go and to do something. And those who visit Brockton have a place to sit down and, and enjoy the day. And so we believe that these two spaces uh, would be a great addition to our downtown area. and. I believe uh, Sycamore Grove is one that's kind of a little more, um, you know, doable and manageable and, and, and really in the pipeline. Uh, the extension of City Hall Plaza, well, it's going to take some negotiation, but um, we're hoping that these two green spaces come online in the next year or so uh, that we can all enjoy together. Excellent. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Um, we did have, and if I was technically inclined, I would go back to the PowerPoint that showed what he was exactly talking about. <laughs> Unfortunately, Counselor, you got stuck with me. Um, I already messed up once. I'm not going to mess around and try to get back there. So, all right. But you can find these either on the BRA's website or the planning department's website. Um, and once again, Jonathan, I don't know if you want to talk about these renderings, but this is Trinity's rendering of phase two. And as you can see, they've incorporated some green space. Uh, once again, pictures always look nice. I can't wait till it's built, <laughs> all right? Um, but this, once again, this is just smart development, urban development that incorporates a green space for, not just for their residents, but also for the people that may be visiting. Um, it's just smart. And Mary, thank you for bringing that up because that's something we always need to keep in mind whenever we're looking or talking to developers. You know, and, and I and I'm never uh, quiet enough to. Um, you're probably glad that I wasn't at the first meeting, but um, I did watch it three times because I was wanted to catch all the information that was there. But you know, I sit outside. We're looking to turn our our little garden in front of our office into um, a, a a garden, a, a, a vegetable garden. Um, and um, and I think those are the kind of things that 
a little bit outside of the box. You know, I put a couple things in the in the newsletter. I mean, in the in the chat about working with the parking authority and using those top areas for events, um, for you know, for places that may not necessarily just be private, but to have a little bit more of a you know congregating of of all walks of life, right? Not our our um, unhoused folks, but also you know for you know I've got twenty two staff people in my office. I would love they're always asking for places to go. Um, you know, talking about putting a little bench up on top of my roof, which is not going to happen. So anyway, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mary. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Thank you, guys. Um, anybody on Zoom have anything they want to put in chat? No? Great mapping. Thank you, Rob. Could you explain what kind of produce um, you grow in a vertical garden? Um, Janet Trask asked that question. That's a good question. Is Greg Day? Greg, are you available? Are you on? Uh, yes. Hi. Hi. Greg Day I've is been... from the Day Brothers. Greg, introduce yourself. Uh, yes. Hello, uh, Greg Day. Um, my firm is the Day Brothers. Uh, it's a real estate investment development company. And uh, we've been uh, doing urban development um, in various forms for uh, a number of years. And I've been working with Robert and his team <coughs> to um, you know, come up with, a, I think, a fairly innovative uh, program for Site AC, which is actually, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a program we're currently executing in, uh, in, in Maine right now. And so we look to replicate it in the city of Brockton. And, it uh, has a few components, as was mentioned earlier, uh, anchored by a uh, indoor farm. It's a vertical farm. It actually is commercial scale uh, production for fresh produce. Um, it's a compelling business model. New England imports the majority, over 90% of its produce. So where you can grow it locally, um, it uh, really is a... Um, you know, it provides uh, fresh, nutritious uh, produce uh, and foods. So that's uh, probably more than you wanted me to say, Robert. So I'll, yeah, I'll no. pause there. <laughs> no, I think that answered the question, um, what type of produce? Um, we're talking more so uh, greens, Greg? Yeah, it's actually, it falls into a few categories. Um, it's, you know, the, com the commodity product is lettuce. But then there's uh, two other co uh, product categories, uh, microgreens, which is really the, the premium product. Um, that's the, the most nutritious uh, produce. And then uh, what we call our petite greens, which is a mix of um, a variety of ingredients uh, for salads and garnishes. And so the, um, uh, and it has the ability to introduce new products as well. But those are sort of the, the three um, key ones uh, that we're able to grow uh, in this uh, environment. Again, you know, at, at a commercial scale. Cool. Um, we've been working with them now for almost a year. Seems like a year. They were qualified through the BRA about almost a year ago um, and working with mass development um, consultants. Um, we're prepared to go before the mayor and the CFO with the proposal, uh, which we hope to do in the next couple of weeks. And if it passes the mayor and the CFO, we'll probably do a presentation, um, another public meeting. <laughs> All right, another public meeting. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. Rob, yeah. there's some there's some comments in the um, in the chat. Pat, that's your job. <laughs> Uh, CSX and Troutbrook, question, that's from Metro South. We're working with Mass Development and some consultants. Um, we've had a meeting, I think a week ago or two weeks ago with uh, representatives from CSX. Um, we're meeting with some of the private owners, uh, sending out information, giving them an update in regards to where we're at. The last time we've had a correspondence with um, folks, neighbors, folks, businesses, that are over near abutting CSX was in 2020, 
uh, right after the pandemic. But that's been the last conversation. So we're re, how should I say, re-engaging those folks and giving them an update as to where we're at. Uh -huh. uh, is that something visitors will be able to purchase the greens? Um, I don't know, Greg? Is that something? <laughs> Uh, yes, so uh, it, it um, as Robert said earlier, there's a commercial space as well that will be programmed in this development. And so in that space, we will plan on having it tenanted by health food um, uh, services, health food stores. And in that we would feature the produce. So, um, so there will be a retail component uh, to, you know, as well as in the farm itself, it actually is open to visitors. It's it's a very uh, attractive architecturally building. It's it's all glass, so you can see inside, um, you know, and you know, watch the the activities of the farm. Um, I'd also should note it employs fifty full time equivalent employees, and so you know, it's it's also a, you know helps the employment base. Uh, yep. for the community. Excellent. I see that Rob posted some information in regard to vertical harvest. Folks, if you want that information is also on the VRA's website. And Rob, I'm sure you'll put it on your website as well. Might be a great uh, to partner with the Boys and Girls Club as they have a vertical freight farm. Yep, they do have a vertical freight farm would be a good idea. Um, as well as there, I think the Boys and Girls Club in the high school may also have a vertical freight farm. But yeah, Mary, those are things we definitely should encourage and work on. Um, let's just see, anything else in our chat? Any other questions, comments? Did I miss anything in the chat? I guess we would. Rob, any last words? No? Good. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I Excellent. can hear you all laughing. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> so listen, um, thank you guys for coming. We're probably going to hold another public meeting. We're going to have to. Um, probably prior to we go, prior to going to city council, we do have to meet with the mayor, uh, the CFO, um, a presentation, a couple of presentations. I see Bill Luster is on here too, um, who's doing um, looking or proposing a development, CMK development, looking at doing the Marion properties, those three sites, the two buildings in the vacant lot. It's actually next to Rock and Beer. Um, looking, proposing to do another 100 units with commercial space as well. Um, and they're also in their renderings design. There is a green space, because as you know, the parking authority has um, space there as well. So they're looking to do some green space as well. Okay, so yeah, a lot that of that would be a city built green space, Robert. Correct. Yep. Um, Robert, not it's Bill Luster. Now we know what we're going to do in the retail. We're going to open a salad shop and get our <laughs> you know, locally sourced, locally sourced vegetables. Locally sourced <laughs> vegetables Perfect. right next door. You know, it makes a lot of sense. Not a bad idea. I know the mayor's always program. saying, if you don't invest in Brockton now, you're crazy. You need to invest now. I may just buy a vegetable store now that I think about it, a salad store made here. I, I can walk it down to the store. Heard it here first. Yeah. Second. Excellent. Thank you, folks. Chris, any comments? Mr. Cooney from the Metro South? No? Excellent. Uh, Mary Waldron, I know a number of developers will be contacting you in regard to the Downtown Business Association and doing a presentation, not this month, but I think we said in April. If we can get on your agenda, that'd be fantastic. Our agendas are getting nice and full, so um, we will. We have a, a DBA meeting on next Wednesday from 1130 to 1230. They are virtual, unless you're presenting. Um, but we will have um, a couple presentations. One is going to be from um, Father Bill's Mainspring in terms of what they're doing. And um, the other one is going to be actually from the Council on Aging, right? So having Brockton be a livable community for the, um, for the aging population, age-friendly, 
Um, and age friendly means not just for paper, it has to be really having our sidewalks and things of that nature be accessible. So we look forward to um, having everybody um, come join us. I'll send the link out to Robert and he can share with the, those that are on this. And um, I, you know, DBA is gonna be keep growing and growing. So I think that's with all the things that are going on in Brockton. So um, congratulations to the staff of both the BRA and the planning office. You are a small staff and what you guys do um it's just incredible work so keep it going thank you thank you mary thank you folks all right with that if there are no further questions no further comments i'm gonna call this meeting to adjourn at 7 35. thank you Excellent. robert hey thank you thank you gentlemen all right thanks everyone for attending appreciate it